Hey, welcome back to Plus This. I'm Kathy Deach. And I'm Nikki Bailey. Hey, guys. And we have returned. <laughs> you just told me to do it, too. Look, I got it together. It's my favorite thing, because I'm usually the one who does that. <laughs> but this time it's you. Eva is, Eva is somewhere laughing in Encino. <laughs> echoes are, it echoes down her driveway. <laughs> I mean, honestly, no. I'm really the worst. So we're all we're all trying to like look at um, y'all chatting. So you know we're gonna have a lot to say in this episode um, because we have our girls here. Oh my god, I'm so excited! <laughs> I know. Our girls are in the house. It's like all worlds colliding. Oh my Fatch god. Fatch oh comedy. God. Yes. Is here, which is yeah. which is fat plus sketch equals fat. Fatch. Hashtag making fetch happen. Hello. You're welcome. Thank you. And um, Nikki is the one who, it was her brainchild and it is now happening. I started it. It's all her fault. It's all my fault. <laughs> you done did it. Oh my God, I did it. <laughs> and I did it with the most amazing people, but we did it. We're doing it. Yeah, we have our second show in our new home. Yes, our next second Friday. monthly. So now we're like really a monthly thing. We are. We have like a regular kind of residency now. It's we are real. That serious. Yes. By the way, we've never talked about him, but Ryan is our guy Ryan. who runs the, our board. <laughs> hey guys, <laughs> I had to steal a mic. I'm sorry. <laughs> and um, so if you hear some sometimes cackling th behind the scenes that doesn't sound like us <laughs> that's who that is that's him he appreciates us and we approve we of his cackling appreciate him that's how it works absolutely here it plus this <laughs> but um we have gloria de leon in the house gloria de leon i thought you were gonna let me say her name because i like to oh say no i'm gonna let you say her podcast which is noveliando yes and she talks about <laughs> novella N no no Novellas. Yes, novellas. Novellas. Mm -hmm. That's how you say that? No, I'm all worried about saying everything. <laughs> I, I, was, I was prepping for one and then the other one fell apart. But um, she has a podcast that she started and she's also a writer and a great actress, guys. So good. And has written a sketch this month. That is so funny. We basically are building our entire show on this sketch. It's that funny. That's how good it is. Yes. She kind of like nailed it. Hashtag nailed it. Hashtag making, making patch happen. Um, and then we also have uh, Simone Mariposa coming. Simone, the beautiful butterfly yes. Mariposa. Yes. She, she is, is a model. Yeah. She's an Instagram influencer like. At her age, I don't know how An she... An improviser as no, well. Yes, yeah. actress, yeah, writer. I know, and doing all the things at once, which is why she's, like, parking right now. Right. So um, we're going to get her here. Oh, he's trying to get a good angle for our... our <laughs> Our artwork. <laughs> I thought I got it. I didn't. I didn't know. Okay, good. Okay, good. So, um, that lovely artwork you see behind Nikki is um, also the um, made by the woman who did our logo for Fatch Comedy. For Fatch Comedy. So, if you there, yes, look at that, guys. Mm -hmm. Fatch Comedy made by the amazing and glorious and wonderful Catherine Hack. And she um, is so sweet that she has gifted us prints, and I had mine really gloriously um, framed frame. because I needed to see some cute fat girls in my yeah. apartment. Um, this one has words on it that say, you do not have to be good. You do not have to be good. It's so good. I so Catherine it. is just a beautiful spirit. She mm -hmm. is... Um, just this deeply spiritual, creative, artistic genius whom I ran over, I ran across her art on Reagan Chastain's Instagram. Oh, yes, that's right. She's from Reagan. And I reached been on out to you, right. So I reached out to Catherine and I was like, I'm starting this fat sketch comedy team. I love your, your fat lady lounging. And she was like, girl, that's me. <laughs> and she was like, I took photos of myself and I create these beautiful pieces of art based on real bodies. So all of the art, all of the bodies and all of her art are actually people 
whom she's taken pictures of and then created these glorious pieces for us. And she's yeah. done one of a group shot of us too she's that I don't have for us. us, but we'll put it on our Instagram and you will like it. Yeah, and she did a beautiful one of me with my girlfriend too. Adorable. For Valentine's Day. She's the best. We love you, Catherine. She is the best. And she um, came to our very first show and was in the front row. And I think we have a photo of that too. I don't know if you already showed it, Rye. But she... Um, That's... That one. Oh, actually, it should be under Catherine. It should be under. But she is in that picture. She's right there. Yeah. Yeah, she's hilarious. She came to our show here in L.A., and she lives in Oakland. And that's a a schlep, and she drove all the way down. Oh, I didn't know she drove. She drove all the way down. Holy moly. To to be at our first show. Yeah, and then um, she did some group work with us, which was really fun. She's just a delight Like, if you want to have, like, a nice artsy night, you could totally hire her to do that. Absolutely. She like does some like group think. Like if you're like trying to get closer to coworkers or even just like family time. Yeah. And I think it's actually what she does would be an amazing bridal party activity. I agree. Like where and and you just make a collage and she like asks you really great, brilliant questions. And she facilitates this beautiful connected time together. So she did it with the entire Fatch team. We all got together at my house. And we created beautiful art and talked about who we are and who we want to be and and what we're bringing to the world. And I'm getting a little emotional just talking about it because it was so good. It was a great night. And she was like, y'all talk a lot. We're like, duh. (laughs) Um, And that's at Catherine Hack, Catherine with a K and an R-Y-N, guys. Mm -hmm. But we post her a lot. We've tagged her in our logo. I think even the Instagram that I used to promote this week I tagged her in, yeah. in the artwork. So definitely, definitely check her out. She's beautiful. Commission her. She's, she's and so good. Have her be in your life. She's a, ph- a phenom. A phenom as to her. Um, we want to talk about a couple of things that happened this week before we get our girls on. We want to talk to them a lot. So, yes. um, But Missy Elliott totally got her doctorate from Berkeley School okay. of Music. So she is now Dr. Missy Elliott recognized. Like, don't even get it twisted, okay, anyone. Don't, don't even fix your mouth exactly. to say her name without putting her credentials on it. I mean, okay? and she's the first rapper ever to get really? their doctorate from Berkeley. Wow. I know. And if anyone deserves it, it is Missy Elliott. Come on. I just was listening. You know, I like, I'm old school. I listen to Pandora stations. <laughs> I'm like so 10 years ago but I have a Missy Elliott one and it plays a ton of her stuff like you know how a lot of them like they put all this other crap in I think hers I've really curated to be like thumbs down thumbs down unless it's her just want Missy (laughs) exactly exactly (laughs) um and it I mean just the longevity Mm -hmm. the partnerships she's had Mm -hmm. and the things that she's had to say I I, if anyone deserved to, to be a doctor of Okay. Rap and music. Absolutely. It's her. She she's she's a pioneer. I mean, like the way like who, stringing words together the way she does, it's it's musical and lyrical and and literary and I, yeah. I love me some and just, Missy. And just rhythm. And also right, because she always make your booty shake. It does not yes. really matter what the song is. Yes. If Missy Elliott is involved, you are going to jiggle and shake. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah! And that she jiggle. was that she's been singing about it for years. Mm-hmm. It's just so fantastic, and that's why her partnership with with Lizzo was so cool. Um, because I, I think Lizzo really gives her her props and says she is the queen that I like bow yeah. to. Like she yeah. she paved such a way for me. And Lizzo was on the cover of Essence, <gasps> and I literally guessed because I'm not going to stop talking about her guys never until she stops being magical which will be never right she's always magical and that's it if she keeps doing a magical thing every week we're going to be here every week talking about how magical Lizzo is exactly we are the OG Lizzo stan okay we love her Like, legit, we text each other about how much (laughs) we love Lizzo. Like, we text each other lyrics to her song. (laughs) Like, just, I'll just, like, drop a a link. Oh, look what she did today. I mean, we just love her. And I loved what she posted about being on the cover of Essence. She talked about the fact that for so long, um, her music hadn't been known in African-American communities because a lot of how people knew her was fat activism. Like, a lot of the fat activist community, which is is racially 
we are working on our racial challenges in the fat act fat activism community but we're a diverse group but a lot of it a lot of it is um uh, a lot of what people are seeing about fat activism and fat positivity is coming from white women. And so Lizzo was a little like, you know, I don't know if black people are hearing my music. And so for her to get recognized by Essence to be on the cover um, was for her. She talked about it being just such a beautiful moment for her to know that her people, her African-American people, she is of many peoples, I'm sure. But her African-American peoples are supporting and loving her. And we are, girl. We got your back. We love you. Yes, for sure. And. I, when you were saying that, I was reminded about how she always like talks about herself being a nerd. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like really being like nerdy and and not really being the cool kid. You know, being the flute player in the mm -hmm. band doesn't really get you like props with being down. So, yeah. <laughs> but she is a twerking flute player. Yes. So <laughs> she combines it all. You know, she really uh, preached at one of her last concerts to a point where like you kind of felt like some kind of like transformation happened wow. and she and it and it's a beautiful video of her like all lit in purple which i just went and saw the prince experience the symphonic music of prince and cried my eyeballs out at that Without concert me. and i just was thinking about like that purple light and like her mm. just being like wrapped up in prince's love like yeah. i just think he would yeah. love oh, who she is totally if he didn't her. before he, he probably did and you can did. you can even hear that she's been influenced by oh him. yeah so i mean i love it yes yeah. yes we love you lizzo come on our we show love you. you know in between all your shiz okay we're gonna show you a little teaser of fetch comedy and um we'll come back with glory and simone and plus this <laughs> So, what, what do you think about, about the show tonight? tonight? Back it was so much fun. And I was like, wow, how am I going to get to do what I love? Like, where am I going to, how am I going to get the opportunity to do that? Oh, I will create the opportunity. Yeah. fun to watch that and I'm so glad that so many people felt the need to record things because that's the only reason why we have that video right um so please welcome to the show our fetch sisters partners in crime Gloria de Leon and Simone Mariposa hello, hello lovely hello. you're here you're hello. here <laughs> cross promoting, Simone, cross that, promoting. The, the, no, the headphones right there. Yeah, take them down. Thank you. Oh, there you we go. You don't need them. I'll block my face. Oh my exactly. Gosh. We Not need to face. see all you in your beauty and glory. Oh my God. <laughs> Hello, Rainbow Hi. Bright. Yeah. Guys, you're here. You made it. We did. You made it to Burbank. <laughs> it's real, right? Yeah. yeah. No, we're Rush here. hour, two. We're going like... to stay here for like five hours, too, because yeah. yeah. we can't get back. Can't get back. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go next door. <laughs> we'll say. go get a beverage. You'll know yeah. where to find us. <laughs> right. We'll be next door. Um, I need to ask Nikki how you knew 
that we what did what did these two ladies and maybe me you don't have to talk about me that way if you want to it's okay um you can tell me about like what was it about us that you felt were fetch yeah so uh well i i got i put out the the word and i asked for submissions and i got a lot of really awesome responses and um, some people I already knew of. I already knew of you from Plus This because I was sweet. already a fan. <laughs> and um, so when I saw that you were interested, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and I did dance a little jig. I'm not going to lie. Um, Simone and I knew each other already. Mm -hmm. um, and so I asked her to come be involved. And then um, Gloria, when she submitted, submitted really funny stuff <laughs> I was like and at first I was like oh no because <laughs> she's because because I I had a slight moment of size ism because mm -hmm. Gloria is a small fat and I was like she's not really fat like I'm fat though so I don't know Thanks. Thanks. but then I was like who the hell am I to tell her how she's supposed to define herself and she's funny so let's be about it. And and then, you know, the other girls in the group, same thing. I just felt like everybody was, like, they sent me samples um, or videos or writing samples, and they were so funny. And um, and I had met Hannah, um, who can't be here tonight. I met her somewhere. So I'd met, I I'd met different people. You know, like, I yeah, just yeah, met yeah. people in different ways, and I was like, oh, my God, yes. So I put, so when I originally got the group together, I invited a bunch of other people. There were like a lot of people sort of in the original uh, meeting. And, uh, and then the people who stayed are the exact perfect right people for Fatch Comedy. Mm -hmm. That's interesting because they're what, I remember not being able to make one of them mm -hmm. and being like, I like didn't meet like seven people. Mm -hmm. But then the next week, like none of those seven people was like a whole new group of seven people. <laughs> so you did. You had a lot of interest. It's interesting how that sort of takes care of itself. But also, uh, what I also love is that your reach wants to go beyond just actors. Like you're like writers, come on in. Like yeah. we like we need you too. And we know that some people still want to write from the fat lens, that point of view. But still don't get a chance yeah, to, to get yeah, their work absolutely. done so ladies is this the first time you've ever done anything that's like specifically um size uh like what is the word i'm looking for like size related size with focus. size focused is um yeah i mean for me definitely uh i didn't really i knew that i was frustrated with not being able to audition for things that i thought i could do <laughs> But I never took it upon myself to create like a fat specific, any spe fat specific content. So when I saw Nikki's post, I thought, oh, okay, maybe with other people, we could come up with something that we can sort of make sure gets done because we have to ask for less permission than if it's just one person. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah. Sure. Yeah, it's definitely the first time for me. Um, and I always had this idea in my head where I was like, I'm going to be the fat girl to do it for everybody. But I even remember saying this in one of the meetings we had, um, like you don't realize that it really does take a village and it does take a group of people to push an agenda. So, um, yeah, I think it, yes, it's the first time I've ever been in this type of arena, being around people who actually experienced what I've experienced before. And it was really eye-opening and it became like a comfort zone for me that's great yeah, yeah. that's yeah. i mean it definitely feels homey yeah and i think that that's what's kind of fun about the audience too the audience even when they're uncomfortable like still feel like they're okay mm. and i think that is because of us like i I, I there's there's right. no like aggression yeah even when it's loud and it it, and definitely strong. Yeah, yeah. even when we're we're, in your, we're all in your face about it. Um, mm. I think the I think that what we're doing is uh, changing the culture of entertainment and changing the culture of uh, of how we think about body and size and shape. But we're doing it in a way that invites you to join us, that invites you to love us, that invites us you to love yourself. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, for me, like I don't want to recreate the same toxic stuff that's 
you know, the same right. toxic environments that so many of us have experienced right. in this business. Um, and so, you know, the goal was to like create something where everybody was welcome and create something where everybody could maybe see a little bit of themselves in it, but also make it specific to the experiences that we have. Mm -hmm. And um, and I think that, you know, like it was just divinely ordained that we had like this group of people came together at this time like and that we love each other so much and that we enjoy each other so much and that we can you know create amazing things together and argue and laugh yeah. and eat and and, and dance and yeah. all the stuff we do when we're together yeah so. and it's funny because it's not like we're like okay 10 o'clock gotta go like it's literally nikki's like kicking us out of her I'm house legit, like, get out of my house <laughs> and we're I'm out tired. on the street like the last time i was talking with delany <laughs> peace who's in the show she said she might call in from her work from the bathroom because she's <laughs> serving tonight but um she's hilarious and you should go to highland park and find her she's working at a restaurant right now but um she we hung out literally till quarter to one outside your house yeah. when you guys were all like hope everyone's safe at home we're like <laughs> we're not that's how much we like each other but that's yeah. but i feel like i've done that with everybody yeah yeah, yeah. Well, like every yeah. every rehearsal we've had all of our like writing sessions have been the best ones of those that i've ever been at yeah. like our writing sessions always have food and yummy stuff and i can just eat and no one's gonna tell me anything right. so it's always so fun <laughs> that's my there. running joke with the ladies is that like what i love about rehearsing with y'all is we always got snacks. Yeah, for real. <laughs> and even at like the writing sessions or like the brainstorming sessions we've had, when it's like we're not afraid to get sidetracked because then that can like produce inspiration for another sketch. Yes. You know, really. so it's really it really does become like a place where you can dish and gossip about things, but also you can create more content for people to be inspired by. Yeah. Absolutely. And that we all sort of have the same sensibility, mm. honestly, that like when something is so good, we all are like, <laughs> that is so good. Like, you know, that's hard to find. Some people really will not let that happen. Yeah. Like they have yeah. to be instigators, as I call them. Just yeah. instigate and instigator. Um, and they like have to find something. <laughs> I was talking to my friend the other day and I was like, um, someone's like, you know, I went to school, but I didn't take, you know, I wasn't really an academic. I was just trying to get through. And I was, and they were trying to pull me in with that. And I was like, excuse me, I took dramatic criticism class and Shakespeare criticism <laughs> class and, and film criticism class in college. And he was like, yeah, because you just wanted to criticize. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god you just <laughs> tore me a new one and yet that's very true yeah. um <laughs> but i think what's interesting is that with this it's like really nuanced and it's not like i'm not feeling it you know what i mean yeah. there's none of that like i'm not really feeling that like everything that anyone has to say about it is like really nuanced and like frankly minuscule like yeah. because we all have very similar tastes and that's right. and uh, that's like talk, like you said i think divine alignment so gloria i want to talk uh to you more about um, actually, you know what? I don't know. Are you Mexican? <laughs> I yeah. So my parents were both born in Mexico. Okay. Yes, I'm sorry so that I'm, I. Oh no. Like it just okay. occurred to me in this moment <laughs> that yes. I do not know yes. where you're from. I'm Mexican Your peoples are yeah. from. Yes. <laughs> um, and do you feel like um, that? Like you are, you're our only Mexican. <laughs> Ew. Uh, so just just so let me help. Yes, people of color. Come on. Say we uh, we are a diverse group and um, and growing in our diversity. Uh, uh, we only have one Latina member at the moment, but we of course are expanding mm -hmm. because we want to reef. We want our team, our our show to reflect all the different types of people. Mm -hmm. And so, your question to the Latina. <laughs> I just was wondering, do you feel, you know, uh, there's, uh, I, there's, there's a little part of me that wants you to do I'm So Fatch in Spanish one night. Ooh. Ooh. Um, I would love to. That would be great. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. maybe even at one of our shows this weekend, which we will be telling you about in a minute. Um, mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. uh, I was just wondering, like, do you, do you feel like you are representing in this group like yeah. meaning like you you feel like you're giving that specific you yeah. know, point of view as a Latinx person. Yes, one of the things that I really appreciate about this group is that it is diverse in that we have very, even though we have sort of similar perspectives, we also have very different experiences. And so I like being able to provide that because my experience being a Latina who is fat is 
there are so many specifics to that and so many like when I go home to my parents house I have to redo all the work that I've done like with <laughs> Badge because I'll go home and my mom will be watching TV and my, I'll say like oh look at that actress she used to be in that other show and she'll be like oh yeah but look at her now she's all fat and so I have to go and my mom's a very nice sweet right. person but like I have to there, it reminds me of the amount of work that needs to be done culturally. And I'm actually really lucky because I have a cousin in Mexico, and I she's so, I feel like she's much more brave than I am because she lives in Mexico, and she's a fat activist there. And so she's actually on Instagram. She's posting pictures of herself in, like, bikinis. like, And she's very honest with everything she puts out. So I, I draw inspiration from her, and she's much younger. She's a much younger cousin. Um, but I draw a lot of inspiration from her. And so I'm really appreciative that I get to say the things I want to say to my people as well and and say, hey, you guys, let's, you know, understand who we are and love ourselves regardless of size. And there's there's just so much fat shaming within my own culture. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. That's, I, you know, it's funny because you don't know until you know. And I, I don't know that mm-hmm. I ever really put that together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I said. would love to do like something in Spanish. Oh my God, <laughs> we're doing need, it, we're guys. Doing it. We need to get another need Latin another, girl up in yeah. here. We need to find another Mexican. So. Speaking of the youngest, <laughs> Simone, you happy to be the youngest of our group? What? Oh, wow. that's our little baby. Not a day over twenty-one. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> that's gonna work for me. I'm like fifty. Do you feel like as the crones over here? <laughs> um, do you? How is it dealing with us? <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask that. No, I'm gonna, she let's might air it out. Let's air it out. Let's air it out. <laughs> so in my like friend group, I'm usually the one who takes charge of a lot of things. Um, so I've noticed in this group, I fall back more and I listen just because I know everybody in our group has a lot more experience than I do. So it's never a thing of like, oh, I'm a baby. I don't know anything. I also am able to contribute as well. But considering that you guys all have a level of expertise and a place where, you know, you can offer advice or a place where you could also hear from my perspective being a younger person, I think it creates a really good environment. I've never felt like it was weird or anything. I feel like I'm fairly mature too and I speak well. So it's not like, I'm like, oh, let's go get drunk. I don't know. Is that what young people do? I don't know. I don't know. You millennials. I know. With your drinking. With our drinking. And your vaping and your jeweling. <laughs> your jeweling. You see how I know stuff? Yeah. <laughs> I'll be on the Twitters. Yes, on the Twitters, on the lines. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't see it ever as a... A problem. I mean, I love how, you know, rambunctious and lively everyone is. And especially when I'm, like, feeling it, too, and I, like, settle into the group, I'm also that person who's just, like, goofy and having fun and ready to act. So, yeah, I feel like it's amazing. It's fascinating to me that you... Like, I think even in one of the first meetings, like, you, like, tried to cop up to not really being an actor. Oh. And it, that was just so surprising because... I feel like you are (laughs) Um, and that there's like certainly since we started a few months ago you have definitely like stepped into like ownership of that Mm -hmm. and we all love writing for you (laughs) so I mean tough luck like you're gonna have to do it (laughs) thanks no it definitely has pushed me to be more upfront about what I'm passionate about passionate about which is this industry which is acting writing creating content um because there have been times where I kind of like sit in myself or like experience self-doubt and be like okay am I sure I'm supposed to be doing this oh I don't feel as confident in this like I've always had trouble with like accepting that I'm an actor for some reason I just was never secure with it but I really think being in Fetch has helped me take ownership of that like you said like understanding that I'm good at this and people think I'm good at this and the fact that you guys enjoy writing for me really does help to like nurture me so yeah Good. Because I had told you you a star. You I already told you that. So I'm just, I'm just waiting. I best not hear no more. I'm just no, waiting for you to write mind. one for me. That's what I'm going to say. Oh. She wrote one for me. I got it today. Thank you. We'll be performing it on Sunday. Yes. Thank you. I'm going to be in a, an original Simone Mariposa Lucky. sketch. The first Thank you. one ever. Again, as the, as the gringo here, I um, <laughs> also want to mention and maybe even give a plug to the UCB diversity, mm-hmm. is it a program? 
It is a, a scholarship. Uh, scholarship. It's a it's a scholarship with a community, you know. <laughs> so like, yeah. if you get a so Simone and and mm-hmm. Gloria and I have all benefited from the scholarships, the diversity scholarships from Upright Citizens Brigade, which is where we learn about improv and sketch writing and sketch comedy. Um, and so once you've received one of those scholarships, you then become a part of the UCB diversity co- community. And uh, and so there there are events, there are uh, improv opportunities. There's all kinds of stuff that that you can be a part of. So yeah, that's good. And how do you, how do you guys feel? Do you feel like it's getting you connected? Oh yeah. I mean, I the, getting the the credit for the the scholarship credit for the class is amazing because you know those classes are expensive. But the benefits outside of that have by far outweighed the benefit of the class itself because the community that I found within the UCB diversity program is so supportive and that's how I find out about opportunities that's how I found out about uh, Nikki's post oh I didn't know that. yeah that I found them through there oh. so yeah I mean they are just constantly promoting and and asking for people so I I've surely benefited from it yeah so, for that's sure. great and how about you yes for sure um I've really found <clears throat> excuse me I've really found a home in UCB, and I know that sounds super corny, but like when you're surrounded by people who are just as passionate as you are about something and are constantly willing to learn and like open up their, or broaden their horizons and also like plug in the people that they know, it's like a huge family in a way. And um, I've definitely benefited. I actually uh, went to school with Anna, the person, uh, Anna Rajo, she is the director of the diversity scholarship. And she definitely steered me towards it because I was kind of lost. Like, how can I be more creative? Um, and the program, the scholarship definitely opens anyone with open arms, welcomes anyone with open arms. And there's workshops you can take, even if you're like in between taking classes. I'm um, like, said, so there's an event, they have like a diversity scholarship recipient event, like a meet and greet. Um, they even have uh, different workshops with like Ian Roberts, which is one of the people who started UCB, like the big names, um, to give people that opportunity because. Of course, we need more diversity in the improv world, in the sketch writing world. And secondly, for people who may not be able to afford it because of where they come from, that's also important too. So it is about giving people the chance and also diversifying the array of color in the community. And not just color. I mean, I think that, you know, I definitely in my application spoke about wanting to do comedy from the perspective of a fat person. Yeah. And that uh, that body diversity is just as important as racial or sexual orientation or yes. gender diversity or anything like that. So so for me it was like I I have stuff that is really specific to who I am and what I've experienced that I want to talk about and that I want represented on the stages, the comedy stages that I that I, you know, that I patronize. And so for me, it was like I I wanted to be really clear about it. It's not just because I'm black, and it's not just because I'm queer. I mean, I'm basically a diversity lottery. Yeah, <laughs> like you get everything yeah. with me. Like, That's so true. like I forgot to mention. Oh so, yeah, it's about all diversity. But it but but and that that to me was really beneficial, and they were so supportive of. They've been really supportive of you know. Uh, of, of me in that community and um, even our very first show for Fetch was at UCB so no I know yeah. and, and we're going to be there again this weekend but we're going to talk about that uh, so Hannah Heard was supposed to join us tonight and she couldn't but she's hilarious so we wanted to show you the clip of her being Hilarious. hilarious and we're, we're gonna take a little hilarious. break get some water and we're gonna come back and i have like a question for all of you to think about Ooh. <laughs> nude that's my answer nude <laughs> yeah. Any, uh, anyone, anyone visiting, visiting arizona, arizona or are we all natives here? here who's visiting okay, okay everyone, everyone from, from arizona. arizona all right <laughs> Woo. do you ever notice that it's always described as a dry heat, right? Arizona is like, oh, it's hot, but it's dry, it's hot, but it's dry. When I hear dry heat, I don't think of Arizona. I think of a sad vagina. I do. It's not sad in nature, but it becomes sad. Every woman can relate to this. You have a guy comes up to you and he's like, what up? You hot? Is it hot? Is it hot? You're hot? I'm like, oh, I'm hot, but it's a dry heat. 
I'm not in with you. Yes, sir. Oh my gosh. I did have a good date, though, recently. I did. And uh, guys, help me out. We get to his bed, and he has camouflage sheets. On his, like those Duck Dynasty camouflage sheets. And I look around and I go, hey, pal, who are you hiding from? This is the studio apartment. I very much so doubt a burglar will come in here to rob you, though. Clearly no one's in this room. Right? It's okay, though. The day ended well, and now his day sparkles like one of those Twilight kids. That was an age joke. Now I know who's old enough not to read Twilight. You're gonna think, you're probably thinking, is this girl gonna talk about her vagina the entire set? Yeah, probably. Yeah. I had a very interesting conversation. Oh, our Hannah. Oh, Hannah. We just love you so much. She is so funny. I love the vagina talk. Um, oh, my gosh. She does a whole bit about her diamond vulva. It's amazing. It's um, a dry heat. She <laughs> also star. Just a star. star. Just I call her our, like, she's like our bombshell. She's yeah. like Fatch's bombshell. She's like our Marilyn. It's true, because she turns on this face with this blonde hair, and you're like, oh. I know, and those blue eyes. Oh I know. Oh, my God, gorgeous. And she is <laughs> stunner, stunner. And also Delany Peace is just sassy as hell, and we oh have Katie gosh. O'Hearn, who is one of your good buddies from, yeah, from, from UCB. From UCB, an amazing character Oh, actor. my God, so funny. And we have Amy Wittenberger, who's one of our amazing writers, and she got to do the last show. Um, and she was hilarious and was like, I'm maybe figuring out that acting's not really where I want to go. <laughs> <laughs> the stress, I think, just <laughs> like killed her. But she was so good. No, she was she so, was good. so good. Yeah. You know, it's not because of her performance, because of her feelings. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She was like, I'm not feeling this. It might have been because of us. It might have been because, <laughs> uh, it might have been because of us. It might have been. Um, uh, and uh, Shannon, Sh- Shannon Quarter. Yes. Who Shannon also, Quarter, who's also one of the writers who. Had a really funny sketch, too. Oh, so good. Yeah. Um, the question I wanted to ask you guys, and, and I know that Nikki and I have talked about this already, you know, we obviously get to say that we're fatch because we're all okay with the word fat. And I was just wondering, like, if you could talk a little about the moment you sort of were like, I'm fat and I'm going to say it and I'm not going to have all that weird energy around it. Like, when did you come sure. out as fat, basically? Yeah, when you come out as fat. Um, I have to actually credit my sister for this because my, my si- I have two sisters, and my sisters and my mom and I, we all have the same body type. Like, we look the same from behind. So we're all fat. And I, I love being I love being around fat women because I love the fat women in my life. And mm. so my sister, my younger sister and I, we do everything together. And um, I, th- I think she was the first person that, I heard just start referring to us as fat kids. So we would like do things and she's like, oh, we're such fat kids. But like in a fun, like in a no yeah, way no derogatory, negative. no yeah. negative. And I was like, yeah, we are fat kids. Like, and that just made me really comfortable with like <clears throat> fat. Fat is fine. Like, I, yeah, I'm fat. Like that, that's what it is. And I do not mean to say that I don't like myself when I say it, but I know it still comes off that way when I say it to people. And people always want to tell you that you're not fat or that, you know, you're fat but you're also got other qualities and I'm like that no it's I'm just I'm not commenting on any of those I'm just saying I'm fat so my sister really um she's sort of my fat partner in crime <laughs> I love it did you feel like it was yeah. like a f- slow burn yeah 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 my it sister's was. my partner in crime too. <laughs> hi Anne. she's in St. Lucia whatever hey Anne girl mm. she won it on Instagram she what? won a, a stay at St. Lu- at a like gorgeous unbelievable resort in St. Lucia that bitch Ooh. whatever <laughs> anyway some um talk to us um so for me growing up the word fat was literally a bad word like my mom banned it from the house because she knew how much it would affect me because i grew up i mean all of us can relate like being mercilessly teased for being if you grew up fat of course um for being fat and it was to the point where it was like a it was a a hot button i guess people would press it and i would just go off um, to the point where like, I, I got involved in social media a lot, which is like how I became like an influencer today. But I got involved in social media like right when Twitter started. So there were a lot of people that I like got to know and like the circle, something called like the Twitter circle formed. So um, people started to point out 
my size all the time. Mind you, I wasn't hiding it or anything, but <laughs> it was like, they were always be like, oh, she's fat, she's fat. And I guess at that point, I just realized, okay, this is something that people are going to notice wherever I go. Like, it's something I can't hide literally because I'm big. Um, <laughs> but so instead of like hiding from it or like running from it or getting defensive about it, just like take it and see what happens. So people are like, you're a fatty. And I'm like, correct. And then from there, it's like, what are you gonna do? Continue roasting me about the truth? Like I'm. This is. There's no. <laughs> right. There's no ammo here. That was yeah. taking out your gun. You yeah, know what yeah. I'm saying? Exactly. Um, so from there, it just became a thing of like owning what is true about me, but understanding that it doesn't exclude me from having other qualities. Kind of like what you said. And there are times too when people are like, "But you're not just fat. You're beautiful." And I was like, "Girl, I know, but let's focus on something that has been a problem for me because I'm reclaiming this word and it's constant." work to be able to do that so I'm focusing on that for a reason right so the word is just a descriptor at this point right yeah. it's it's really refreshing I feel like my life changed when I just yeah. started saying it it really did like and my shifts really like I had to shift my brain yeah. like had to like fire a different way yeah and I that's why I, I've always just been amazed at people who just were like oh no my whole life it's been fine I, I it's very few and far between especially Americans like yeah. usually it's like people from other countries I yeah. do have to say that I, while I have done all this work to make me okay with the term fat I actually still have trouble ex expressing like fat in Spanish mm. oh. yeah because uh, probably because I haven't heard it like without it being a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, I think even, well, I mean, I'm not Latinx or anything, but I I do speak Spanish. So I see like comments from people who are like of, who speak Spanish coming from different countries commenting on it. They will use the word like gorda and it feels a lot more like a punch, I feel like, more than just the word fat. So even if people are reclaiming it, I feel like it is like slowly but surely, especially a lot of, um, countries are kind of behind when it comes to body positivity. Yeah. So us like claiming this right now is so far fetched from them because it's like ingrained in culture. Like for example, um, I'm West Indian, and my grandmother, God rest her soul, was so focused on image all the time that every time she would come to visit, she would literally point out to my parents like, why is she still fat? Mm. And it kind of throws you off a little bit because if you have like parents or at least people around you who are trying to give to you like empower you and give you confidence but then you have this cultural thing in your head like okay wait I'm doing something wrong so it's like this constant fight so I do I yeah. can relate to the yeah. idea it's just it's a little bit further behind and so yeah we need to start getting go to that positive exactly <laughs> yeah for sure there are quite a few there's a, a I follow so many people on Instagram guys uh, with the plus the show and I, like can we please talk about Brazil like Brazil is crazy I love my Brazilians hello <laughs> hello and we need to go because they're all about it but I also know their culture like it's like the second it's like Los Angeles and then Brazil. like Brazil is like the the hubs for um for plastic surgery like yeah. they they really do you have know, a it's, thing I mean I think it's really interesting when you look not just you look at uh, body positivity and fat positivity and you look at the rest of the world and what's happening in the rest of the world it's as it's it's very similarly complex mm -hmm. as races you know so like if you look at um, like if you look at a country like Brazil, they have like 400 different words for the different races there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and it is an act of revolution to call yourself negra. Like, mm -hmm. So I went to Brazil for six weeks in 2003 mm -hmm. and I had on a t-shirt that, that said Beleza Negra. Yes. And I had these two little girls come up to me and say, oh, don't say that about yourself. You're mm -hmm. not black. Wow. And so mm -hmm. like, so like, and in the same way, while I was in Brazil, my being a fat person in Brazil was like, like it was, it like it was like people would stop and watch me walk by, and uh, and it was like, wow, every everything about who I am is on call right now, mm -hmm. is being called out right now, um, and it's not like it doesn't happen here. It was just really interesting for me to see that, like, even around the country, mm -hmm. around the world, the same issues that I'm dealing with here are happening there, and you know, we're supposed to be the most progressive, one of the most progressive places, right? Yeah. We're supposed to have our stuff together. We're supposed to be leaders of the free world. 
and we are still struggling stuck with in we're still ideas. stuck on on it's ideas not, of like of, 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 of just allowing people to be human yeah. that are that are antiquated beyond anything we can imagine with our last three minutes i want to talk about something really quickly so um i know we we're so chatty i knew it was gonna be this way (laughs) right i knew this was gonna be can i call you right is it okay right guy right guy um so one of the things that like one hot topic it, it stuck out to me because we are working on a sketch for our monthly show about this right we're just doing it for monthly we're not doing it this weekend right Right, Which one right. The um, the no, we're doing actually. No, we're doing it. We're doing, this it, weekend. We're yeah, doing the, it. Black Twitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, about uh, the ways we're sort of basically sexually harassed oh, <laughs> um, yeah. as fat women, yeah. and how it like looks a little different than Ooh. for straight sized women. Yeah. Um, there, I was reading an article about sexual harassment and about how um, it's in the Chicago Tribune, I think it was about how women um who are plus size don't. Uh, get taken seriously they don't report sexual harassment because people think they should be grateful for the harassment they receive Um, and it really is an issue but I know one of the things you were writing about was that like complicated relationship Nikki between like not getting any attention whatsoever being invisible and having someone be like where's your number where's your number where's your number right 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 yeah when I lived in Philly I would get hollered at on the regular Right. Like like I always was having there was always someone as I walked by being like, hey, how you doing, beautiful? What's your know? How you doing? It's annoying as hell. When I lived in New York City and I walked down 125th Street, it was just constant like dudes trying to holler, following down the street. Yes. Annoying. And I hated it. And then I came to L.A. and men didn't see me at all. Like men don't see me at all in L.A. And so suddenly I found myself kind of missing. <laughs> The, har- the harassment. <laughs> the harassment. <laughs> like, kind of missing. Like, like I knew when on the East Coast, I knew when I left the house looking cute, I was, you Somebody know. Gonna tell some, you. Yeah, somebody was <laughs> going to tell me. I was going to come home with some numbers, something, whatever. Like, I was going to. But here, it does, you know, like, here it's like, I am invisible here. Yeah. And so, like, finding the balance. Like, I'm like, I don't miss being catcalled but I don't like being invisible either. Right. So, like, what's the... Well, there's yeah. something to be said for just acknowledging somebody's presence or even just being nice to somebody. And don't just be nice to people who you think look good. I mean, right. I that you feel... you sleep with. Yeah, yeah, or that you want to sleep with, exactly. Like, I feel I look good. I don't feel like people should just pretend I'm not there because that does happen. All I mean, you. Mm-hmm. I'll be standing next... I'll be talking... This has literally happened mm-hmm. to me where I'll be talking to uh, a guy and a friend, a cuter friend, will show up and then it shifts. Oh, and yeah. I literally have thought of just, you I've done where I just like walk away. Yeah. Because I know no one's going to notice. Yeah. Like, yeah. don't be dicks. Like, that's all I'm just saying. Don't, just be, don't a be a dick. dick. Like, just even, don't be a dick. even being from here, because we're both from California, mm-hmm. I like the party scene, like going out, I would always see my friends like getting numbers, dancing on guys. And I would go to a party, literally nobody would talk to me. If they were to talk to me, it would be to get my friend's number. Or even when I go out now, like literally, I no one says anything to me. Even and if they do, it's like something super inappropriate. Like this one guy really passed by me and was like, "Oh, you just the size I like," and I'm like, "Ew, Ew. no, thank you." But they don't say anything in public. But yeah. if we go online, oh. how many people hit us up? Oh my gosh, yeah. on my Instagram, Trying I post get, about I post yeah. about dating site. I post my dating site screenshots all the time yeah. of men literally like going to town about how sexually attractive they find me. But then when I mention, okay, I would like to go on a date, they just ghost. Yeah, it's yeah. just crazy. You, we gotta take them to Philly. We gotta take them to Philly. Y'all be you doing really good in some, Philly. Some, like, you would seriously, you would clean you up, clean the fuck up yeah. in Philly. We're gonna get some. We're gonna get some hoagies. We're gonna get some cheesesteaks. We're gonna get some pretzels, some tasty cakes, some cakes. We're gonna, some some cakes. We're gonna go town in Philly. Can Let's go. New York for like we can go to Harlem. We can go to Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we go to Brooklyn. Yeah. Yeah. the accent just does something to me. But I think we could have like I mean, it's actually a conversation we could probably have like over and over and over. It's about like you know we we talk about it even in our sketches. This whole idea that like men want uh they want a thin woman on their arm but they want a thick woman in their bed yeah that guy who wrote that google book yeah the like it's like what do people google he found oh. like so Pornhub gave him all of their info oh. about people uh, and by the way. um they <laughs> are <laughs> but <laughs> interesting um what he found out and he was surprised about it was that literally the majority of men search for 
plus size BBW on porn sites, but then they found out their dating sites. They say they prefer someone mm-hmm. thin and fit athletic. and all that athletic. Yeah, just, mm-hmm. um, so um, that's yeah. like that's like and that's like that's actually proven statistically. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, okay. We're gonna talk about all these things and more at all of our shows. Okay, <laughs> so why don't we each take a show that we're doing and we and talk about it? you? Nobody knows. <laughs> okay. <great. laughs> okay. So um, we do have to wrap up. We're doing, we're opening, we're doing opening night of Black Women. Of the Black Women in Comedy, Comedy. Festival tomorrow night, Friday, uh, at the Pack Theater at 8 p.m. Sunday at 6.30, 6:30. we are at La Concha with the Black Women in Comedy Festival. Different show. Different show. We got two. Then we're going to hightail it from there over to UCB for the Black Twitter show. Where will we will also be doing a set because to all new, all new all things, new stuff. and yeah, then but. our monthly recurring on the regular show is every fourth Friday, eight p.m. at the tomorrow. Palace Production Center out in Van Nuys. All of this information is at Fatch Comedy, F A T C H Comedy. Also. I'm blowing it up on Plus the Show. Can you guys give your your handle shout out if you want people to follow you? Sure, Where can yeah. Find you? Uh, on Instagram, I'm Gloria the Actress. And I also have uh, Noveleando, my podcast, so Noveleando Podcast on Instagram. I also have noveleandopodcast.libsyn.com. If you want to get the podcast, you can get it on iTunes and on Spotify as well. Amazing. Yeah. Um, my Instagram is Simone Mariposa, M A R I P O S A. Um, my website, also where I talk about like body positivity, fashion, is SimoneMariposa.com. And I am also on a mess hall team at UCB. We have monthly shows um, on Sundays at seven. So please be on the lookout at what is it? UCB Inner Sanctum dot com. Um, and my team is called Bug Juice. So come see me. They're so cute. <laughs> Guys, thank you for making it in rush hour traffic to here. Next week, yeah. next week, we have um, Kelly Schumann from Superstore. Ooh. Who's going to be with us. So stay tuned. Wait. Look for her next week. Thanks for being oh here. We'll see you next week. Guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.